stars with side jobs and their nets. And then Johnny Cochran, John, Jeff, and Sean. They're so punk, steaming up the screen at lunchtime, but when the workday's done, their nights are even more wild. We were sober, and we were safe. And we had sex. Uh-uh, no. Some of your favorite soap stars. But you won't believe what these guys are up to when the cameras stop rolling at the end of the day. Meet Jeff Tracta. By day, he's busy playing the good-hearted millionaire's son, Thorne Forrester, on The Bold and the Beautiful. But now Hard Copy uncovers a secret, and it's a side of this soap star you've never seen before. There are a lot of things that you don't understand about me. Things! Things! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. When Jeff's not captivating viewers by day, he's moonlighting in a one-man show playing 24 different characters. <laughs> Talk about split personalities. I have a good ear, so like I've always been able to do voices. I started out when I was a little kid. I loved The Wizard of Oz, the lion from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> So I had all these voices going on inside of my head, and my friends would always tell me, you should go ahead and become an actor. You've got to do it. Not only does this heartthrob use his voice for mimicking, he's also a budding singer, both on and off the show. But Jeff's not the only soap star with a side job. General Hospital's John Lindstrom tapes his show about three days a week, juggling a challenging role playing twins. I am not going to feel guilty for behaving like an adult. He may have two jobs on the show, but he has a third to combat these rising stars or no cowardly lions when it comes to trying something new. <laughs> Those guys have a lot of guts. Now, Johnny Cotton out of trouble, and now it's payback. I cannot believe you represent Mr. Haney. Oh, my. <laughs> Miss Sanders, it's a pleasure to meet you. Haney's the name of Mr. Haney from Hooterville. The dad said you were very bad to go. He certainly did. Well, as a kid, um, I, I did watch a lot of TV. Can I get you a deal? <laughs> Yeah, we're shaking, <laughs> <laughs> oh, moment. These people are animals, I tell you, animals. <laughs> well, she loves me. Good old friend of mine. I was in the third grade, and I was chosen by Mrs. Barry to be Papa Bunny in the Magic Easter Egg, which was the, the show that year. And I remember I had 11 pages of dialogue with Mama Bunny and the other bunnies of the patch. And I remember when I was doing this that it felt very, very natural to me, being a rabbit. No, <laughs> being, being on stage. <laughs> Thanks again, Wes. That's right. You put in a good word for me. I, I really do appreciate it. Well, you can repay me right now. Joe, how did you get that little wig thing in your face? It's fantastic I have. I wish the spelling people thought so. Hey! You're gonna get your big break soon enough. Now stop it. Well, there was one point where I just, I, I found out that they, they didn't exactly know what they were gonna do with my character. And so they put me on a recurring status. And then, what happened from then was I, I wrote agency with Charles Randolph Wright, and um, we got a lot of recognition from this from the show that I'm doing. And then um, I got a development deal with Castle Rock to to create a sitcom. And at the same time, we had Bobby Eakes who plays Macy, and and I have an album that we released in Europe, and that just did really well, and it went double platinum, and and we started doing these concerts over there for houses of 10,000 people, and the producers then came up with a great storyline where they would allow Thorne and Macy to become big pop singers. So that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. So 
it's amazing how, you know, suddenly they got a great idea and, and they asked me to come back and I will, you know, I'm, I'm planning on staying on The Bold and the Beautiful as long as it's, it's feasible for, for me and I love my job there, it's great. As a kid, um, I, I did watch a lot of TV. Can I get you a beer, Get me out of this guy. We're taking ages. John, in my... I spent last week in Los Angeles, and while I was there, had the exciting opportunity to go behind the scenes of one of the most popular daytime soaps, The Bold and the Beautiful. Yesterday, we met John McCook, Ron Moss, and Catherine Kelly Langer, the young man I could marry. Today, we meet the other side of the Forrester clan, Thorne and his wife, Macy, played by Jeff Tracta and Bobby Eats. But first, let's find out a bit about what goes on behind the scenes of a daytime drama. That is your key, Thorne. <laughs> you thought you were getting a card, didn't you? As well as two loves on screen, written Bobby's incredible music skills into her character, allowing Macy and husband Thorne to break into song now and then to the delight of fans. There was no way to come coming to Toronto to appear in the Arcadian Court, a big new like night. This is a big thing for Toronto. This is like the return to Toronto of, of live entertainment. And you and Jeff will be there singing and dancing. We can do a couple sets there, yeah. So looking forward to it. Um, Jeff and I sing together. We sing together on the show. But we also try to do as many personal appearances as we can singing because we love it, you know. Um, and Jeff does a great job at uh, stand-up comedy and impressions. And, so he, he's very entertaining and we enjoy it. When we come back, we will meet the other half of the bold and the beautiful singing team, the incredibly talented and funny Jeff Trekta. You have no Newcomer to the cast of The Bold and the Beautiful compared to many of the stars who began their roles when the show launched four and a half years ago. Thorn. His experience on yep. other soaps helped him step into the role of Thorne Forrester, the sensitive second son of fashion tycoon Eric Forrester. Available? What do you mean by that? He took some time off. Some time off? Yeah, he needed to get away. Well, I suppose he has been under a lot of stress, but then we all have. Where did he go? Up to the cabin of the Big Bear. Alone? No. Who went with him? You... Well, you bet. He is the tried and true wonderful man. He is the icon of being, you know, the, the guy who's going to love his wife till death do us part. She's having an affair on him. Macy's having an affair with Jake. Can I tell my... Oh, I'm not going to tell my funny joke. I got a great joke, though. Tell me a funny joke. Well, you know, she's been carrying on with Jake, who's the tennis player. Right. So I've gone on a diet, the actor, because I was very concerned that Macy was going to have to make a decision between Jake and the fat man. <laughs> but she's still seeing him. And... Uh, <clears throat> I wish them nothing but disease and awful things. <laughs> how, how did you get into this? What the fortuitous event? I was a recreational therapist for blind and retarded adults in New York City. I had my degree in psychology, and I came to Los Angeles to work with senior citizens. And while I was working with 1,500 senior citizens, I, got a, I started studying at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Pasadena for eight weeks. And I was cast as 
Cole, Danny Zuko in, in Greece, in the musical Greece. Yeah. And um, from doing that, I, I an agent saw my work, and I ended up getting a part on One Life to Live in New York a few short months after that. And I stayed in New York. I did Loving in New York and lots of regional theater. It's kind of amazing how life takes twists. You know? Now, that is a bizarre story. That is truly a Hollywood story. I mean, if somebody wrote a script, it, I mean, who'd believe this? They say it's ridiculous. Mine kind of happened in reverse. See, I went through my struggle after I had success, after I was on Loving, and I had worked for a long time doing little regional theater. I went for like four years where I worked nonstop. I went through starvation period in New York. Just mm -hmm. the actor's strike came. I couldn't get arrested. So <laughs> I was like working as a doorman, a waiter. I worked for a company called Little Elves. I was cleaning out people's apartments, cleaning out their ovens, and uh, doing all sorts of fun jobs like that. And then fate stepped in again. And then I just took the Cocker Spaniels and moved to L.A. and about two months later signed this four-year deal. It's amazing. This is a wonderful part about this business is, you know. Why do I feel like a woman in the hands of a very successful car? I can see you, you know, you've done some wonderful roles, and one of the roles that I think you would have been best suited for and probably enjoyed the most was the mad dentist in A Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, I had a great time doing that. I bet you did. I did. I got to do all my voices. I do lots of impersonations. So, oh, well, you all watch Green Acres out there in Canada, don't you? I, I, Okay, this is one of my favorite. Mr. Haney from Green Acres. Mr. Douglas, owe me $16.17. <laughs> I will sell you this here Victrola, and I'll throw in a negligee for Mrs. Denise. <laughs> I haven't had sex in so long, I forget who gets tied up. <laughs> me or the pig. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, so I got to do that voice, actually, in, in Little Shop, along with the... You don't have Carvel up there. Carvel ice cream. ice cream. No, but we see the commercials. With that yeah. guy. Cookie Puss. Hey, <laughs> hug me the best. We get Cookie Puss dial 1-800-337 gift. <laughs> Made fresh daily. We have a new case for death in the family. Tommy the Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the voices that I got to do up there. Your calling surely must be in... Um in, in performing, in, in comedy. I mean, surely, if you look into your future, you must see that surely, this is a natural fit. Sure. McLean was a big inspiration. Um, <laughs> surely, I will... Actually, I was studying uh, to do... I, I wanted to break into doing voices in cartoons. Oh, and yeah, yeah. right when I first came out here to Los Angeles, I had, like, started working with someone on putting together a tape. Because I love cartoon voices. I do lots of cartoon voices, but I'm not going to bore you with any. <laughs> You'll be watching the McGilly Gorilla Show, starring me and Mr. Peebles with Wood Belt and Pumpkin Poo. <laughs> Look, Mouse, stick it in your ear. Oh, Pumpkin Poo. Come on, Pussy Cat. You can't catch me. Go to hell, Mush Mouse. <laughs> I'm, a very, I'm a very shy person. <laughs> Have you always been this introverted? Always. Always. I was a very quiet child. I would sit alone with my Cocker Spaniels as a kid. And, and do 12-act plays. I prayed a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was into prayer as a child, actually. Um, we were Catholic. I was a chubby kid, too. I started a prayer group, Lost for the Cross. <laughs> thin for him. Give us this day our daily slice and cut it thin and toast it twice. And when this horrible diet is done, when my battle with chocolate milk is won, let me stand above with the saints in heaven in a shining robe size 37. Have you ever done stand-up comedy? Have you tried it? No, I haven't. Actually, I have. Like, I just opened for Bob Hope, believe it or not, Friday night at, uh, there was a, a the Beverly Hills Police Department put together a, they have an annual dinner. Right. And, and I was the opening act for Bob Hope, and I did comedy, and I... I sang God Bless the USA. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Did it work? Oh, of course it worked. No, no, but I mean, there's a difference between just being funny when nobody expects it and then standing up and, you know, on command. And be introduced as Thorn Forrester the from The Bold and the Beautiful. And the thing is, my character is as funny as a funeral. I mean, he's... This guy's not funny. Not though. funny at all. No. Th there must be a really serious part to you. The other side. Oh, there's a very serious part. Yeah. 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 Do you want that part? Yeah, let's see that part. Okay. Could the serious part come out now? Yeah, I think that I, and I'll be totally honest with you, I think that 
comedy and people's ability to be funny comes from a place of, you, um, you know, if we go back and we talk about childhood and all of that, I think it comes from pain. I do. Are you telling me you had a painful childhood? Yeah, I had. I went through a lot as a kid. I mean, not not nothing that I'm going to get into. Yeah. But we. But I think that com true comedy uh -huh. and and humor in people is a cover up. We're covering up who uh, something that's going on deeper down within. You are exceptionally interesting and exceptionally talented. You have extraordinary talent, extraordinary um, capabilities and abilities. I love this woman. Well, but I, yeah, I, I'm not only here Do to you want to introduce yourself now, Mom? <laughs> Come up here. This is my mother, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. <laughs> Secretly related. No, no, but you are. You are. I'll tell you something. I don't think uh, actors. Do and I'm this. not putting them down, but no, no, you.